Okay, this month marks two years since I first covered an LLM from a Chinese company. And back then, people were saying things like this would never be as good as the Llama models, this would never be as good as models that were coming out of San Francisco, etc. Well, jump forward two years. Today, we've seen the introduction of Kimi K2 thinking. And not only does this beat all the Llama models and the other open models that are out there from other places in the world, this is clearly giving the proprietary models from Anthropic, OpenAI, and Google a huge run for their money and often beating them. So the Kimi K2 models are not new. The original one came out in July this year. I covered the updated version of that in September, and it really shows how much effort and my guess also how much compute it takes to go from one of those base models that has just been fine tuned with normal instruction tuning or supervised fine tuning through to actually making one of these thinking models that has been trained to do extended chain of thought. And in this case, trained to do interleave chain of thought with tool calls. And when we take a look at this model, we can see that there's clearly been this effort around test time scaling. Interestingly, that is focused not only on long chain of thought, but also on tool calling steps. So one of the biggest things that for me is fascinating is not just that this model is consistently beating Anthropic and OpenAI for many of the benchmarks out there, but that this model has actually been trained to do interleaved chain of thought in here. So let's look at this and see what it actually is. If we look at this sort of input here of being a math question, we can see that they describe this as basically using 23 different interleaved reasoning and tool calls in its process of coming up with the right answer. So when you scroll down and look at this, you see that you've got all of these sorts of long chains of thought followed by tools, like a search tool, followed by more reasoning based on the response of that, followed by multiple search calls, and then using Python to actually execute this. And this is really backed up when you come into the moonshot.ai platform. Moonshot is the company that actually makes Kimi2. We can see in here that not only can you run the models, but you can actually add tool calls and even MCP servers in here so that the model can use those server side to be able to get the response that you want out. So this really just drives home the whole concept that we're seeing that with a lot of the foundation model companies, we're moving away from just calls where we get a response back from an LLM to where they're running search tools, code sandboxes, even where you can put your own MCPs server side to make the process more agentic. And Moonshot is really being clearly focused on this being one of the big things around the Kimi K2 models, especially this Kimi K2 thinking model. So they show that on humanity's last exam for the text version here, that they're actually beating OpenAI and Anthropic at this. Now we clearly see this, if we actually come to their site, we can see that they've got not only the sort of typical, you know, thinking, non-thinking modes and stuff like that, but they've got a whole bunch of tools in there. They've got your typical deep researcher stuff and computer use options in there, as well as having special modes for data visualization, slides, etc. On top of this, you've also got Kimi supporting the Anthropic style Claude API, which allows you to hook up your Claude code to this model. And that's becoming a key thing where you need to have code sandbox integration and these other agentic tools on the back end. And if we look at the agentic coding, we can see that this model clearly is no slouch. Now, that said, it doesn't seem to be the fastest model around. So maybe just like we're waiting for a GLM 4.6 Air model, we will see some kind of speeded up version of this in the future. But clearly these coding and agentic skills are becoming sort of not only the standard for the top proprietary models, but also for the top open models as well. Now, one thing that I find fascinating in here is that they talk about Kimi thinking can execute 200 to 300 sequential tool calls driven by this sort of long horizon planning and adaptive reasoning. And it seems that's something that they have highly focused on training into the model so that not only can the model use those kind of tools, it can interleave the reasoning, 
to be able to decompose ambiguous and open-ended problems into clear, actionable subtasks. This one is definitely going to be interesting to see just how well this does. And it would have been nice to see how well this model actually does on the meter benchmark that sort of measures long horizon tasks. So just to show you an example of that, I basically gave it a task, not too complicated, but find out all the dates of the Kimi releases from Moonshot. And you can see that basically it's written some to-dos. So it started off by basically writing a plan. We can see that it goes through and checks those. It's then started to do search. Gradually as it's gone through and searched each thing, it has then added those into Python to start writing these down. Again, going back to the plan in here and finally getting it to the point where it can actually start to put together a website and even do things like create images and deploy that website so that we can actually see it. So we've got the written example of the information over on the side here, but we've also got this website that it's being created from their sort of Kimi OK computer. And we can see scrolling down this, that we've got a nice timeline from when Moonshot was founded only two and a half years ago to the initial sort of Kimi chatbot release, the various different updates of these, including the Kimi 1.5, which probably didn't get as much credit as it deserved just because it came out around the same time that the DeepSeek R1 came out, right through to the Kimi K2 launch, the Kimi K2 updated, it does look like it's actually missing the Kimi K2 thinking, which I think we can give it a pass on considering it's just out today. But this was all created in a matter of minutes, just from the initial prompt of asking it to find out all the dates of the Kimi releases from Moonshot and telling it that I wanted it to use the Kimi OK computer, as you can see down there. Another one that still hasn't finished running is I've given it one of the International Math Olympiad questions, and it's over 20 minutes into thinking. I've had to press continue twice for it to keep going with the task here. So I will be interested to see, does this end up getting to the actual correct answer for this particular question, which the Gemini Deep Think model was able to do, but it took almost 20 minutes to actually run it and give me the result back. All right, so if we jump into the model card on Hugging Face, we can see the details about this. This sort of just reinforces that this is an open model. Anyone can download this. Anyone can serve this. This is not being locked down like the proprietary models are. If we come and look at some of the key stats in here, we can see again them stressing that this has been made to do the sort of deep thinking tasks and tool orchestration tasks. Another thing interesting in here though, is that this version has been trained with quantization aware training, which allows us to run this in four bit and still get very good results out of it. So the total size of this is a trillion parameter mixture of experts model. It's got only 32 billion parameters active in here and definitely fits into the ratios we're seeing of active parameters to total parameters being in the 20 to one, 30 to one kind of range. Lastly, just to finish up, I think that this is interesting that they are stressing that this model is able to do things like creative writing and fiction and things like that. Up until now, we've generally seen the models that are trained with RLVR, that's reinforcement learning by verifiable rewards, have been very good at things like math and things like code, but not as good at things like creative writing. And this has been one of the things that has set the proprietary models apart from a lot of these open thinking slash RLVR models. So if you want to try this model out yourself, you've got a couple of options at the moment. You can try it out directly from Moonshot AI. Their API is charging 60 cents for a million tokens in, $2.50 for a million out. If you're using the turbo version, that goes up to $1.15 in and $8 out. And if you don't want to use it directly from Moonshot AI, you can use it via Open Router. My guess is that we'll see quite a number of providers for this over the next few days. But just be aware if you're not getting it directly from Moonshot, either via Open Router or from them directly, make sure you're getting what you're actually paying for. This is one of the things that Moonshot did, which I think is very interesting. This whole idea of the K2 vendor verifier where they basically compare different providers 
and graded them on how well they were serving the model compared to the control version from Moonshot themselves. So this is, I think, the second one. This came out only a couple of weeks ago. But the first one really did show that a lot of providers just weren't providing anywhere near the standard of model that Moonshot were actually providing, perhaps because they were over quantizing or they had other errors in the setup. So it will be interesting to see how this pans out as other providers get into providing access to Kimi K2 thinking. So I really do think we're at this point now where the cost of tokens is becoming so cheap for the amount of intelligence that we're getting out of it that we really should be focused on long horizon agents and what you can actually build with those. This is an area that I've been focused on for the past couple of months. And I think we're going to see with models like this, people creating agents that can just do a whole bunch of things that we haven't been able to do up until now. Anyway, let me know in the comments if you've tried out the model, what your thoughts are about it. How do you feel about having sort of frontier level intelligence for only $2.50 per million tokens? And what is it that you yourself plan to do with that? As always, if you found the video useful, please click like and subscribe, and I will talk to you in the next video. Bye for now.